So you guys have been asking me to take a look at the Brave web browser on the channel for a while now. And I've always kind of resisted because I've been a long time user of Firefox. And by long time user, I mean I've been a Firefox user since the beginning, since Firefox was created. And before that, I was a Netscape user. And, you know, I'm just comfortable in using what I know. But I got to say, the Brave browser is pretty interesting in what it does. And I'm not certain that I won't make it my default web browser going forward. So let's start with some of the basics about the Brave web browser. So Brave uses the Blink web engine. Now that web engine is the same web engine that powers Chrome. The Brave web browser was created by a company called Brave Software and this company was founded by one of the original creators of Firefox. How does the Brave browser differ from its rivals from Chrome and Firefox? Well, it does something really, really unique. So if you're one of those people that values your digital privacy, especially, but also if you're one of those people that just uses ad block, you hate advertisements because the web is just littered with advertisements everywhere. Brave does something really cool. It strips out all the ads from the websites you're viewing. And if you have ads enabled in Brave, it replaces those ads with Brave's own ad network. So Brave is really trying to cater to this underserved niche out there, this underserved market, which is the anti-advertisement crowd. Brave is just one of a hundred of these boutique browsers that are out there trying to differentiate themselves from the rest of the pack. But I think the model that Brave is using, you know, the stripping ads out of the websites and then substituting different ads, uh, it, it's kind of cool, although some people do criticize Brave for being unethical because of you're basically what you're doing is you're ripping the advertisements off of these websites. Now, if you're a content creator on the Internet, you build websites and you're putting your own ads on these websites. Brave is stripping your ads off of your website and replacing it with their own ads. So you're not getting money from that. It's almost akin to just stealing my site's content, right? I, I, I'm not sure exactly if I'm 100% comfortable with that business model. So what exactly is the Brave browser? Here it is sitting on my desktop, but Brave really is no different than any other browser that's out there. I mean, it lets you do all the standard stuff you expect a fully featured web browser to do. It lets you navigate the web, navigate to your favorite websites, you know, bookmark your favorite websites, uh, run web apps, display, play online content, online games, works fine with YouTube, Netflix works great in Brave. I watched some Netflix in it earlier. And like most other browsers out there, it's free to download, free to use. It remembers your site authentication information, so it'll remember all your passwords and stuff if you want to save them in the browser. Again, it uses the Chrome web engine, the Blink web engine. It is free and open source software, so big plus on that. It's licensed under the MPL. Now, the MPL is an interesting free license. The MPL, by the way, is the Mozilla Public License. I would say it is kind of a middle ground between the ultra-free licenses like the BSD license and the MIT license, but it doesn't go quite as far as the GPL, the GNU Public License. The Brave software firm was created by Brendan Eich. He is, again, one of the co-founders of Firefox, one of the original co-founders of Firefox. He is also famous for being the creator of JavaScript. After he left Firefox you know, under pressure because apparently he supported California's 2008 Proposition 8, which was a ballot measure that was attempting to ban same-sex marriage in the state of California. Uh, I guess because he supported that, he was kind of forced to leave Mozilla. But anyway, he goes and starts Brave Software. Brave quickly set itself apart from the crowd. It gained some notoriety, mainly because of its aggressive anti-advertisement attitude. Uh, because, you know, again, the browser was, was built to strip all advertisements from websites and then replace it with Brave's business model, their advertising network. It's really, 
it's almost like you own a TV network, right? And you decide you're going to steal another network's television shows, and put it on your network, but of course show your own ads, you know, so you can make money off of it. It's almost like that. You're rebroadcasting somebody else's program with your own ads. I will say from a digital privacy standpoint, I really understand what the guys behind Brave are trying to do because Brave, by getting rid of all the ads, it eliminates all ad trackers, right? Those are that the little tiny page components that advertisers and site publishers, they deploy to identify users so that they can know what other sites you visited and basically track your usage. These trackers are used by ad networks to show products similar to the ones you've purchased in the past or maybe you had considered earlier. Maybe you searched for it in a search engine earlier and, you know, they, they just... All these ad trackers are always trying to serve you better advertisements, you know, try to sell you stuff. But there are some privacy issues with these things. Well, you don't have to worry about that with Brave. For those of you that use Chrome, I know many of you are going to ask the question, hey, will my Chrome extensions work in Brave? Many of them will. Many of them won't. So some of the more popular extensions out there, they have been prepped so that they are usable in Brave, but not all of them, probably not even most of them. So that is something to consider. So let's take a look at my desktop and let's show a website that I know has plenty of advertisement on it. And that is CNN's website, CNN.com. And what I'm going to do is, you know what, I'm going to open up CNN.com here in Firefox. Now in Firefox we have this big you know like half page advertisement at the top. This big banner at the top that is an advertisement. And if I scroll down I got some ads here, some ads here and they even label it advertisement. I don't know if those are Google ads or just CNN's own ads. More ads right here in the center of the page. If I scroll down I will even get to a section on the page uh, right here where it says paid partner content. Everything in this whole section, all these stories, and including the actual banner ad, everything here is an advertisement. So that is CNN.com in Firefox. Now let me pull up the same website in Brave. This is CNN.com in Brave. No big half-page banner at the top. Of course, it blocks all that. It's, it's, it doesn't serve any of those ads. If I scroll down, a lot of the other ads that were in the middle of the page on Firefox, again, nowhere to be found here. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, remember, this was almost a full page of ads right here that showed in Firefox that does not show in Brave. So that, if you're one of those people, you're a uBlock Origin user, and you, you're one of those people that just loves AdBlock, Brave really makes sense. Because Brave is free and open source software, it's available in all of your Linux repos, most of them anyway. It was not available in the Arch repository, but it was available in the AUR, the Arch user repository. They had three different versions of Brave. They had Brave where if you installed it, it was going to compile it and it, it's going to be like an hour, maybe two hour download and compile time. That's probably not the one you want. Look for Brave-Bin. The binary build of Brave, it installs much quicker. I suggest that be the one you install if you are an Arch or an Arch-based distro user. Once you launch Brave for the first time, you'll get you know a page like this. It's basically the, the Brave start page. Uh, it tells you the amount of ads and trackers it has blocked while you were using it. It tells you time, estimated time saved, because the pages should load faster because it eliminates all those ads and the ad trackers. So your browsing experience should be much faster, and it will tell you how many seconds you saved uh, in this session of the browser. Over here you have, of course, the time, and this is Brave Rewards. Now, Brave has a currency, a cryptocurrency called BAT. You earn this cryptocurrency by viewing stuff in Brave. As you accrue this cryptocurrency, you can spend it. You can share it with content creators such as myself. For example, if I go to my YouTube page, I'm not exactly sure if that's going to go to my YouTube page. Yes, it does. All right, this is my YouTube page in Brave. Now, if I go here to the top, you will see there's a little link for Brave Rewards. You click on it. 
It says, I'm a verified creator. I had to verify that I'm actually DistroTube at YouTube, and I've set up a crypto wallet where I can receive funds. And if you wanted to, you can click send a tip, and you can tip me in BAT, because if you're a brave user, you know, by viewing the web, you're already accruing some BAT anyway. And the reason they give you this stuff as a viewer is so you can spread it around. You can spread the love around. You can tip your favorite content creators, whether it be video content creators, writers, bloggers, vloggers. In a lot of ways, this really makes a lot of sense. It's the reason why I'm really enjoying hosting my videos on library right now. Those of you that didn't see my video a couple of days ago of me also mirroring my YouTube comment over on library, you know, it's got a cryptocurrency to it where people can tip you, you know, if they appreciate something you do, they can leave you a tip. And I think that's the same way of doing things on the web. Instead of having all these websites that are just littered with advertisements, matter of fact, so many websites are completely pointless. The only reason these websites exist, 95% of them, is just so they can have some ads so that the creator of that website can make a little money. They're not interested whether you find the content useful. Many of this content out there is auto-generated garbage anyway that has no real value. Brave though, and this kind of model forces people to actually put out content that's useful because now if I find a blog or an article or a video or something that I find really cool helped me out and I want to thank that content creator, all I have to do is just open up my Brave Rewards and send that guy a tip. So anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit about the Brave browser with you guys because I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited about using decentralized social networks like Mastodon. I'm really excited about using uh, blockchain peer-to-peer -peer YouTube alternative like Library. And I'm really excited about the Brave web browser. I'm genuinely excited about this stuff. Because of the ad stripping strategy that Brave uses, you know, on the desktop, web pages are going to load twice as fast as they load in Chrome and Firefox. I'm not even kidding. Um, let's talk speed, right? So the speed increases. They're not really surprising because by eliminating all the ads and the ad trackers, you know, the Brave downloads those web pages much quicker than any other browser because they're downloading less content, much less content. In fact, it's not really that technologically brilliant what Brave is doing by eliminating all the ads and the JavaScript and the trackers and everything. It makes sense. Everything should load instantly because you're simply retrieving less data than the other web browsers. But the real reason you want to use Brave, I think, is privacy. By eliminating the ad trackers, Brave blocks efforts by advertisers to identify you. Brave as a company has sworn they have made a commitment that they will not now or ever store any user data on their servers. And they do this because they claim it's better for you, the user, of course it is, but they also claim it's better for them as a company because they don't want to fool with all your data anyway. So how refreshing. So guys, go out there and, and give Brave a try. I think you'll be impressed. I know so far in my experience with it, it just runs great. I, I'm really impressed with it. Now, before I go, I do want to thank a few special people. I want to thank all these names you're seeing on the screen right now that help support my work over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.